Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing great out there. So, so many projects that I am working on right now and there's about 15 different videos that are in various states of production. Um, check out the channel update video that I just put out there. And uh, we have so much coming up on the channel, so stay tuned. I'm putting together a lot of content and uh, it's a lot of interesting stuff is coming down the pike. So today we are going to take a look at our next 9mm project, which is going to kind of uh, change things up from the last project. Now with the previous project that we did with 124 grain bullets, uh, the whole thing with that was kind of oriented around making a good load that was going to cycle in the Suomi and the Uzi and all that. Uh, and actually we still have one final video that I'm going to put out uh, where we're just going to do a real quick video. Uh, some folks had asked me about uh, uh, chronoing different barrel lengths and stuff like that. Um, so I thought we'd shoot some rounds through some pistol and then also the Uzi. So I'm going to go ahead, I'll, I'll do another short video uh, to kind of, kind of tie up that video series. But already in terms of the press, we're ready to move on to the next project and kind of get that cranking and get that moving. And so what I wanted to do with this, we're going to go ahead and call it Project USPSA because uh, the aim with this is actually to create uh, a good uh, target shooting load that's comfortable to shoot and accurate, uh, but also to something that carries a little bit of weight um, to actually take, uh, take out those steel targets sometimes that you'll encounter on various stages in competition. And I have kind of found that 115 grain bullets, um, a lot of times they just don't cut the mustard. Uh, any of y'all that have shot USPSA or IDPA know what I'm talking about. Uh, different things to trigger different targets and stuff like that when they use steel. Uh, a lot of times those lighter weight uh, 9mm bullets are just not going to do it. And so years ago, <clears throat> I picked up, uh, before uh, the uh, uh, coronavirus uh, nonsense started and everything, uh, and uh, the whole world shut down, and uh, as everybody knows, everything that happened with that. Um, uh, at that time, uh, and also too, when Trump was still president, uh, we reached a low kind of in prices, and prices really, really bottomed out uh, to where they are practically giving the stuff away. And that year, I think it was 2019, maybe late 2018 as well, uh, Spear had, uh, at least twice I can think of, had significant rebates of 20% off of their bullets if you bought their bullets and stuff. And so I just happened to luck into with Midway where I was able to get the rebate, plus they had uh, 20, well, they had 20% off, then they had birthday pricing, which I think was another 10% off, and they gave me free shipping. Then on top of that, there was the 20% rebate from Spear. So I think at the end of the day, with these particular bullets, uh, I think I paid like six or six and a half cents uh, per bullet, um, which is pretty much just about giving them away. Uh, so unbeatable deal, picked up quite a few of them, of course, at the time. And uh, the thing is, though, is uh, I expected to use them uh, kind of a bit more early on. And, uh, you know, maybe a year or two or three ago. <laughs> and they're still sitting on the shelf because I've been just doing other projects and stuff. But now it's time to kind of use these and start using them up some and make a load with them. And pretty much what these are is these are... 147 grain bullets uh, and they are Spears uh, TMJ which is basically a plated bullet but what they say is that the plating is a little bit harder and thicker than usual plated bullets uh, and I have found that uh, with nine millimeter velocities even with hot ammo on those 124 grain bullets I've never had an issue with the uh, copper plating stripping off even though we're at like 1,450 feet per second uh, on that one other load. Never had an issue with that. So they seem to hold up actually pretty good. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, I don't know, I like using them. And they do pretty good. Now, the 147 grain bullets, uh, this is going to be my first time ever loading 147 grain bullets for 9 millimeter. 
So it's kind of uncharted territory in terms of loading for a higher weight range. Um, so in terms of, um, you know, what overall length we're going to use, uh, also too, uh, we'll talk about the powder here in a minute and everything. Um, uh, basically it's all new to me. I've been loading nine millimeter for over 10 years but it's always been 115 grain, 124 grain. So if y'all have tips or ideas or any thoughts or anything like that in regards to 147 grain bullets, uh, please leave uh, comments below. I you know, do appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> so the other thing with this is what kind of powder that we're gonna use. And this was something that, um, you know, I have a number of different powders that I can kind of pick from. Preferably, I want to use something, you know, that's uh, pretty much off the shelf. And, um, you know, a couple different options. But I think the one that I was kind of looking at was Tight Group, okay? Now, this big old jug of Tight Group here, I bought this. Uh, actually, my dad gave it to me for my birthday way back in 2014 and I'm still <laughs> it's still got some weight in it and uh, the thing with tight group is that for a powder um, it has a very low charge weight and it's also extremely affordable as well and I have found it to be very accurate uh, in addition and this is a powder that I think if you're going to shoot pistol uh, it's one of those things where I don't think you can do wrong by having it around uh, and as we've seen, like right now, this still has some heft to it here. And I've, you know, as, as far as I know, over the years, I've used plenty of it. Uh, it goes a long way. <laughs> a little goes a long way, as it says on the bottle. And uh, it certainly does. I don't know. It'll be interesting what year I actually uh, uh, finish uh, this bottle um, and uh, how long it's actually going to last for. But it will be interesting. Uh, to see how many years I can actually get out of this eight pound container. And I think when my dad bought it, I think it was like $115 or something for this eight pounds. So that's why I encourage you guys, uh, things like this with these uh, pistol powders and stuff, you can't go wrong by stocking up because an eight pound container like this uh, will easily make over 10,000 rounds. And, uh, uh, and uh, you know, you add in maybe some other powders that you're doing uh, with different uh, bullets or whatever and something like this that can sit on the shelf for a while because you know as you've seen I don't use tight group all the time with everything um, so it kind of has its its purpose so so with tight group I think we're going to start uh, with tight group and kind of see how it goes I'm open to switching to other powders you know if if there's um, you know, something else that'll work well. I also have CFE Pistol. Uh, I have Unique as well. Unique would probably work pretty good, but I don't really want to use Unique on the Progressive Press. It tends not to meter as well as other powders. Um, the Accurate Powders, um, that would be something I'd be interested in trying. So uh, for those of y'all that are watching this out there, if you have any other ideas or um, you know, powders that you guys like for like heavier grain bullets and nine millimeter. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, you know, I'd be interested to hear about it and your thoughts on all that. Um, looking up kind of uh, what kind of recipe we're actually going to start with. Now, interestingly, uh, in the Spear book with their bullets, um, they list plenty of other powders here, uh, but they don't have anything for tight group. Uh, so there's other things here. Vitavori 3N37. I actually bought some of that recently. Uh, so we're going to be doing a load with that here at some point in the future. Uh, Power Pistol, which I just finished a load with with the 124 grain bullets here. Um, Accurate number 7, I've used that before. That's a powder that tends to fill up the case with a lot of powder, but it seemed to shoot pretty good. I bought a pound of it one time. It seemed to work okay. Accurate number five, I think a lot of people use that in 45 ACP. Um, I guess that might be an option, perhaps. Uh, but they didn't have anything for tight group. And also, I went online and looked up their most recent data that they had. They, don't, they didn't have a, a loading for tight group either. Um, I went over <clears throat> and consulted with the Hornaday manual. And in the Hornaday manual here... Um, 
just to see what they had for their 147 grain bullets. Uh, they did not have anything at all. Uh, you know, same thing. They have, you know, some different powders and stuff. Uh, Auto Comp and Power Pistol and Blue Dot, Accurate Number 7, CFE Pistol and all that. Nothing uh, with Tight Group, however. And so I pulled out the Lyman Manual. And in the Lyman Manual, I, you know, sometimes you get some surprises. So let's see here. All right. And funny enough, <laughs> this is the funny thing, is uh, it's not in the spear manual, uh, but uh, they actually have more recipes here uh, for the 147 grain TMJ. This is the exact bullet that we're using right here in the Lyman manual. And uh, they had uh, a, bit, uh, a bit more in the way of uh, choices in terms of recipes that we got going here. And uh, they actually have tight group listed. Uh, so this is a good thing. At least we have kind of something that we can kind of go off of uh, to get a start. And then we can try to figure it out from there and see how it's all going to work for us and how it shoots. Um, so that's good. So I think we have kind of a generalized uh, load here that we can start with. And then we can kind of play around with it from there and gradually work our way up depending on how it shoots or how, you know, uh, with pistol, a lot of times you'll see, and you've seen on my channel, sometimes it's uh, more sensible to go just a tenth of a grain at a time. Sometimes you feel like you can make a bigger jump two tenths of a grain. That's something that you all have to kind of figure out yourself in terms of what you want to do. But I think we have uh, kind of something to go with to, to start with. So tight group, uh, suggested starting load 3.2 uh, with a max load of 3.6. So not a lot of wiggle room there. Um, you know, basically 0.4 uh, grains that we can kind of play with in terms of the recipe they put out. And then their overall length is 1.115. Now, I will tell you, typically with 9 millimeter, and I have kind of done this for a while, uh, typically with 9 millimeter, I actually kind of um, use a longer overall length. But, you know, and kind of looking at some of these, they kind of seem to use like a shorter overall length. Um, but, you know, what I can do is I can start with that. And if I feel for whatever reason I want to change that, I can. Um, but, you know, 1.115, I don't know. We can just go ahead and start with that and kind of see how that goes. Um, other powders they have listed here, Bullseye 700X 231, which I actually have some of that. Um, Power Pistol, uh, Vita Vori, uh, N340, um, True Blue, some of these I'm not familiar with really. Accurate number 7 again popping up. So yeah, um, there are some choices here. So I think it's a thing kind of like with 32 ACP. We're a little bit in uncharted territory, at least for me anyways. And so trying to find a powder that is ideal for this, um, that's going to kind of be the thing. Uh, so I, as I said again, for you all that uh, watch the channel, um, you know, if you all have ideas and stuff, I'd like to hear about it. Um, the pistol that we're going to use for this is a Walther PPQ. Uh, this is uh, one of the M1s that has the European style uh, paddle release. Uh, I don't think they've made these for a little while now. And then the PPQ, of course, has been superseded by the PDP. Is that what they call it? I don't know. But uh, essentially, they took the PPQ, I think, and just made some upgrades on it and all that. Um, so pretty much now the PPQ is dead, but these are relatively fine shooting handguns. Um, they're renowned for having a better trigger than the Glocks. Uh, I find, uh, I have found typically with this pistol is that it shoots uh, groups about um, uh, pretty much twice as tight or half as tight, or whatever you want to call it, uh, as my uh, Glock 17 with the factory barrel. So much more accurate. I noticed a big difference when I started shooting this in competition uh, over the Glock. Now, one thing I would like to do with this is that apparently you can get the Apex trigger for this and it actually 
uh, makes the trigger even better. So that's something I would consider doing as upgrade at some point. But this will be the pistol we're using, a uh, five inch barrel. Uh, so, you know, a uh, nice sight radius here, basically, um, between the two sights. So kind of a um, little bit better for accuracy, I think. And um, yeah, pretty fine shooting handgun. Now, one thing I would like to get at some point is a long barrel um, H&K VP9. Uh, that's something I'd consider. But I think for right now, um, you know, we've got our PPQ. This is what I would probably shoot in USPSA right now. Um, I have another handgun that I would also use in it as well. But I think we'll go ahead and do our testing with this because this is the most likely candidate at the moment in time. Um, and we just want a good solid load that's gonna put those uh, steel targets down and also give us some good accuracy uh, to help us with our scores. So anything to help with that would be better. So at the end, um, the next stage of this is going to be going to our single, uh, not our single stage, our progressive press and uh, starting to load some of these up and just kind of see how things go on the loading bench and uh, you know how how tight group is working with the powder measure and you know just uh, just kind of you know just generalized stuff on the on the reloading press and kind of see how it goes then after that we're going to go out and do our first bit of testing and kind of see what we come up with so this project should be a lot of fun how long it's going to last for? Well, I don't know because if tight group doesn't work well, we're not getting great results. We can uh, change gears and shift to another powder. And like I said, since it's my first time reloading 147 grain bullets, uh, for those of you out there that have different suggestions, um, even after this project, let's say six months or a year from now, I'm constantly loading nine millimeters. So uh, even if you guys are watching this like a year later or two years later or five years later, uh, still feel free to comment below. Um, I'm always interested in, uh, to hear other people's um, experiences and stories and stuff. Um, so feel free to leave, uh, leave any comments down below. So I think that should cover it in terms of our goals and our ambitions here and what we're up to with this project. And it should be a lot of fun. So thanks for tuning in, folks. And we will see you all for part two coming up here shortly.